Hello, my name is Tomasz Pawlicki. I'm the technical support manager at Geoloptic. Our company manufactures instruments for measurement of optical radiation that are most often aimed at manufacturers of luminous. One of my roles in the company is to provide technical sessions about photometry and the use of that equipment to our customers. I would like to show you how to proceed with measurements of light distribution of luminous with the use of our new goniometer GLG301800. As an example, we will use Lumina provided by our partner company Use Normlicht. This is a very specialized product aimed at very specific use. However, the same procedure will apply to any type of Lumina. This is our new model of goniometer GLG301800. It is updated from the previous version by the capability of measurement of luminous up to 180 cm long, as well as with maximum weight of up to 30 kg. The advantages of this model are its very fluent movement and robust construction, as well as high precision ensured by the use of total encoders on both axes. This model also features extensive movement in the third axis, which allows us to fix luminous that are pretty shallow in their construction, as well as those that are very long. So we can manage to fit luminous up to 80 centimeters in depth. This model also features smart and convenient solution for electrical connection that provides power to measure Lumina. As you can see, those connectors are used to provide power to our Lumina and corresponding connectors are fixed on the back panel of the goniometer where we connect our power supply. The goniometer's construction includes rotating connections for cables inside it that allows us multiple rotations without the bundling of any cables around it. Additionally, we have laser alignment tool that helps us to ensure correct geometry of measuring setup. Its exact use will be presented in the following scene. As an option for this system, you can also order this manual control panel. It allows us to move the goniometer in three axes, but the same functionality can be obtained from the software. Stabilized laboratory power supplies are also very convenient tools to use, because when they are steered by software automatically with the rest of the system, they also allow us to fulfill the requirements of the standards in terms of stabilization of the Lumina. As a measuring device, we use Spectis 1.3 LS, which is our preferred option for use with this system. It is joined with straight light limiting tube that increases the amount of signal and then for increases the speed of measurements. The distance we position our spectrometer from the Lumina must allow us to treat it as a point source. In short, the standards gives us quite easy tips to follow to achieve that condition. Luminous with wide distribution of light should be measured with the distance of five times their maximum dimension. Luminous with narrow distribution should be measured at 10 times the distance. For luminous with very directional distribution of light, that distance should be 15 times their length. The distance should be measured between the spectrometer and the rotational axis of the goniometer. In practice, we don't set that distance exactly to every single lumina that we measure. However, we must always ensure that the minimum distance is met. Measuring the lumina from too great distance unnecessarily increases the measurement time. The fixing plate 
of the goniometer features a selection of different threaded holes that can be used directly to fit our lumina. However, it is always an advantage to prepare your own customized adapter for the particular products that you are going to measure. With the luminar already fixed, we must rotate it to a perfectly vertical position. I use the manual controller panel, however the same can be done straight from the software. In similar fashion, we must move the optical center of the luminaire to the rotational axis of the goniometer. This is where we use our laser alignment tool. The position of photometric center can be located in different spots for each individual luminaire. The standard describes several pretty simple situations. I will try to give you a better idea with the following examples. In the case of this luminaire, we have a pretty simple situation where the illuminating surface is just a flat two-dimensional area. Therefore, the photometric center of this luminaire is in the center of illuminating area and the laser spot will be flat with the surface. In the next example, you can see that the illuminating area is three-dimensional. Therefore, the photometric center will not be located on the very front, but in the middle of the three-dimensional illuminating area. In this similar design, we can see that the illuminating area is only half of the complete three-dimensional shape. Therefore, we can place the laser spot only in the center of illuminating area of this three-dimensional shape. In case of modern designs, it is often even more difficult to find photometric center of luminaire, and the final decision will always come from the operator of the system. However, in this particular example, you can notice that the opening of the luminaire is not the luminous area, because the reflector is black. The light comes only from the very small element inside it. With the luminaire already prepared for the measurement, we can proceed to the software side. When entering the dimensions of Luminaire into software, we have to measure total physical dimensions, which are total length, width, and depth. Separately, we have to enter the luminous area dimensions that are applied in the same way, but they are usually quite a lot smaller. The height of the luminous area is observed from four directions. In this particular case, we have different heights seen from angle C0 and C180, but zero height from C90 and 270.
three-dimensional light distribution of the luminaire is mapped into C surface and gamma angles within those surfaces. C planes are the surfaces diagonally coming from this rotational axis. Gamma angles within a given C plane are the angles where we observe the luminaire from different directions according to rotation about gamma axis. Now we should prepare our laboratory for measurement conditions and perform dark current calibration where no additional light sources are switched on.
Thank you for your attention. I hope that this video explained a little bit more clearly the details of goniometric measurement. If you ever decide to have such a system in your laboratory, I'm sure we will meet again.